Hi, this is our camera tutorial for the Canon XA10. Uh, we're going to do a tutorial for if we give you the whole XA10 interview kit, which if you're watching this and you've already borrowed this gear, then it's going to look like a bag like this and a tripod like this. So we're going to go through setting up a pretty much standard Canon XA10 shoot. So the first thing to do is to open your tripod assuming you're at your venue uh, that you're gonna be shooting at. So, this is the tripod. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna show you how to set up a tripod. Some of you may be able to skip this step if you already know how to use a tripod. But um, this is your handle that can get in your way. If you don't, tighten it so that it's up and vertically. Now I can adjust my legs. See that pop out like that. And then you have two adjustments for each one. Lower one, lower the other. So here it is. Here's the tripod all set up. Um, so yeah, I mean this is this is pretty much it. There's this lever under here. This is called a fluid ball head. And uh, what you can do is you can, if you're on uneven terrain, or if your legs just aren't level, there's a bubble level right here, and you get the bubble level in the middle. You tighten it down and just hand tight right there and now you know your level. Um, there are two adjustments on this tripod that we're going to really pay attention to. This one is your tilt. So now I can move freely up and down like that. And then you have your pan, which is right here. And once that's loose, you can spin around like this. Now the general rule with tripods is if it's not doing what you want it to be doing, it's probably for a reason that's probably locked down. So you never want to force anything, uh, although there is some general resistance with this tripod. Um, if it's not budging, you, you don't want to force it because you risk breaking something. Um, so now we're ready to put the camera on. Uh, so before you put the camera on, you should tighten down both your pan and your tilt head so that it's uh, steady. So, you know, reliable source to put your camera on. So now we're going to pull the camera out. Okay, so here's the Canon XA10, and there's a battery already in it, but we're gonna go through the steps in case the battery is not in it um, to see how to do that. On the bottom of the camera, there's the quick release plate here. Now, the only way to really get to this battery section here is to kind of loosen it up. I'm using a penny, you can use your keys, you can use anything that'll not bend, but uh, you just use it and you rotate and you loosen this up, and then the the plate becomes loose and you can turn it to the side and then all of a sudden you can kind of see what you're doing. So there's this release, if you can see right here, right there, there's this uh, battery release. So you need to press that down while pulling the battery out simultaneously. Never force the battery out, you'll break the camera. Um, so sliding it down and then slide the battery out. That's how you take it out. And then to put it in, you just match up if you'll see here, you match up these little prongs right here with the golden prongs that are inside the camera. So you just put it in, press and slide, and you heard a little click, and now it's in. Um, so once you have your battery in, your new battery I would assume, um, you just wanna line up your quick release plate. Um, under here, try to, I'm gonna take it all the way off so you can see. Um, there are two holes on the bottom of the camera. There's where you screw in, and then there's this uh, little extra hole, which if you'll see on your tripod plate, this little metal piece here, you fit that into that second hole so that your tripod plate remains straight. And then you never have to worry if you're off center. So I just hand tightened it down and then using my keys or this penny or whatever, uh, just just tighten it a little bit more so it doesn't slip. Um, there we go, it's nice and tight. And we're all set. So new battery, tripod plates there. Now we're gonna connect the power cord. And um, in order to power the Canon XA10, which I recommend if you're doing a long shoot, you don't wanna just rely on your battery power because you could run out. Um, there's this little flap back here that says uh, DC in on it. 
uh, and there's a little hole right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this this power cord that comes with it, which it could look all different kinds of ways depending on who had it last, but um, we try to try to make it look as nice as possible. Um, it's pretty standard, you know. I'm sure you've seen these around your house. Uh, two parts to it. Just uh, plug this part into the wall, and then this part. This is your. This is where you charge it. So in this little back area here. So you take this, and it's a little. It's in a little bit inconvenient of a spot, but it'll fit uh, even with the battery in. And then you run this to a power outlet. Um, if you're far away from a power outlet, you should ask us about an extension cord and we can give you an extension cord to plug it in. So before we put the camera on the tripod here, we wanna make sure that this lever here is loose enough to slide it on. This is the lock, the locking mechanism. So if it's too tight, the tripod's not gonna slide on. So now that we have it nice and loose, and then we slide the, tri the camera onto the tripod, like so. So you hear that click, that means it's on, but then you need to tighten down this. See, it's sliding right now, but as you tighten down this, kind of grips it, and just hand tight, don't go too tight, and now you can feel the camera's nice and sturdy on the tripod. So, before we do anything, you're gonna to wanna to take the lens cap off, pinch it on the sides, and take it off. Uh, camera face is open, and now I'm gonna turn it here we have the power button right here. And just press it. Once you'll see this light turns green. And then I'm just gonna open up my LCD here. And you have an image. So we're gonna go through the basic operation of what you need to do to set it up before you shoot. But before we do that, we're gonna to wanna to look over here. There's three settings. You'll see auto, you'll see M for manual, and you'll see cinema. Now, for some reason, this is on cinema. Um, we're gonna put it on M for manual. Even if you're using auto functions, you still wanna put this on M. And now, we're ready to do our adjustments. So on this, on this camera here, everything is done through the function button. Okay, so this is what the basic menu looks like on the camera, and pretty much everything we do is gonna be done through this function button right here. And once we press that, it comes and we have this menu here, um, which is the first thing is gonna be our exposure, and then we have our white balance, and then below we have our focus. The really the most important thing we need to do here is focus on this top one here, the exposure. So let's go into that. And there's a slew of options here, uh, and it depends what you wanna do. Um, if you just wanna do auto exposure and you don't wanna worry about what kind of light is what, um, you can do this programmed AE up here, but instead we're gonna show you the manual way because if somebody's giving a presentation in front of a PowerPoint or something like that, auto exposure might expose for the screen and not for the person or vice versa. So or maybe you can't see the screen and you wanna see it. So for those reasons, we're gonna go through the manual steps. So we're gonna click manual. So here we have the manual exposure. Uh, on this first level here, we have the f-stop or the just general exposure function. Then we have the shutter speed, and then we have the gain control. Um, what we're mainly concerned about at first is making sure this gain down here is at zero. Um, gain is artificial light, so when we're adjusting for light, we wanna make sure that we have um, the gain at zero and then work our way up at the end, not to start with gain. Um, the least amount of gain equals the best image quality. Um, but sometimes you need to give it gain, especially in dark environments, so that you can at least see what you're looking at. So we're gonna take this, this gain right now, which is at 11 decibels, and um, we're gonna slide it all the way down to zero using this, um, this kind of trackpad thing at the bottom. So you can either just press it and uh, kind of work your way uh, back and forth, or you can use the arrows and just uh, go one by one. Um, the touch pads are a little bit finicky, but, um, you know, so get that to zero. Now that we have our gain at zero, um, we're going to go up to our f-stop. Um, before we do that, though, we're going to always have our shutter speed at um, 1-60, always. So never change that. 
Um, it, that has to do with the motion in your video, and we just, since we're at 30 frames a second, we want it at 60. So gain at zero, shutter speed at 1-60, and then now we're going into our f-stop. Um, and when we click this, it we can just adjust our light, and we can see um, as we slide the trackpad down here, we can get more and less light. Um, it's 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 kind of tough. You got to use your eye. Um, you might notice some zebra lines that come across, which are these diagonal white lines. That's standard good exposure. It's at seventy percent. That's if you see some zebras, that's good. Um, but if if you get too bright, you're going to lose your information. The general rule is to shoot darker if you don't know if you should be brighter or darker, um, because then we can lift the image later on. If you shoot too bright that information's gone and there's nothing you can do about that. So, um, But you want to try to get your exposure as close to as possible of what you want. So if you have a subject and um, their face is what you want in exposed properly, you should dial it so that you just start to see some zebras appear on their face. Um, and then that should be a pretty good um, lighting for that. And um, so yeah, you, you make your adjustments until you see kind of what what works for you and what you know what you see is what you get. So we're gonna X out of this over here, and um, we're gonna take us back to the main screen here. So once we've got our exposure figured out, we can, I guess now we'll work on our white balance. Uh, we're gonna go back into our function button right here, and now we have the white balance is gonna be your second option usually. So we're gonna press that and it takes us into this kind of, it, it could take you anywhere on this screen, but there's a few basics. You'll see that there's presets that say fluorescent, uh, they say tungsten, they say sunlight, I think. Um, so you can pick one of those if you're outside and it's sunny, sunlight, I mean, that, that'll be fine. But what we wanna do is we wanna show you how to get it exact for whatever. So uh, under this K, down here, if you scroll and you hit this K, um, it will take you into the same kind of scrolling bar that we were dealing with before. And if you just point at something white, um, then you can adjust this bar back and forth and until the white image looks, looks white. So if you go you know, all the way one way, the image might look yellow. You move all the way the other way, the image might look blue. You're gonna wanna split that difference so that it's neither yellow nor blue. Um, now the logic behind these numbers that you're going to be seeing, uh, typically 3200 equals indoor tungsten lights. So a lighting setup like we have here in the studio is going to be 3200. Um, if you're out in the sunlight, uh, it's going to be closer to 5600. So those are two numbers that you can use. Um, if you know there's no sunlight coming through, use 3200. If you know it's all sunlight, use 5600. Um, but if you're somewhere in a mixed color temperature environment where there might be some sunlight coming through the window, but you're also lighting with another light, you're going to be somewhere in between that. And that's why if you scroll on this sliding scale, you can kind of, you know, find where that balance is. Um, it's good to know that if sunlight trumps all, so if you have sunlight coming through, even though it may not feel like that's where all the light's coming from, most likely you're going to be closer to that 5,600. Um, but if you're in a mixed temperature, you're probably gonna be in the 4,000s somewhere. And um, yeah, if you're in a fluorescent environment, which I don't recommend, um, the standard for that is typically 4,400 degrees. So you can just set it to 44. Um, and the benefit of doing it this way is that if you're using two of these cameras, say you're doing a two camera shoot, you can set both of them to the same color temperature and you don't have to worry about if, uh, you know, in the old ways of doing it, you'd take a picture of a white card and judge it off of that. Um, the cameras could get different information and your images would be different. So uh, if you're using two cameras, you wanna make sure all your settings are pretty much in line. But that's white balance. Um, and now we're gonna just pick whether or not we wanna do autofocus or manual focus. Um, it depends what, what you're doing. If it's just a speaker standing at a podium, um, I would recommend manual focus because they're not going to move. If you're dealing with a speaker who's walking around back and forth and may change their depth, 
uh, autofocus may be a better option for you. Um, this particular camera has face detection. So on this button here, it says autofocus dash manual focus, AF dash MF. And if you click that button, uh, it toggles between auto or manual. So when it says IAF on your screen, that's instant autofocus, so that's on autofocus. Um, and you can actually click the screen on somebody's face and it'll form a, a box around them and keep them in focus no matter where they go. So that autofocus function is great. Um, but if you're doing one of these podium speaks where they're not gonna, um, podium speaks, if you're doing one of these podium speeches where they're not going to be moving at all, the autofocus may be a hindrance because if somebody walks by the screen or something like that, it may try to focus on that person and, and it may throw off your focus. So if they're gonna be still, you're better off just going to manual focus and using the, di the ring in front of the camera to adjust where it is. Um, you're gonna see these red lines that appear on your screen. Those are peaking functions and what that means is whatever is red is in focus. So you see the red in your screen, it's obviously not gonna be recorded uh, on red, but it's a huge help if you're, because it's such a small screen, <clears throat> it's such a small screen that you wanna make sure your focus is right uh, when it's blown up to a bigger screen later on. So um, you zoom in on the subject all the way, get your focus, make them as red as possible in your screen, and then zoom out and get your framing from there. This camera, since it's so compact, it doesn't have that same zoom lever that you're used to on bigger cameras. Instead, the zoom lever is actually behind the camera handle here. Um, and you just slide it to the left if you wanna zoom out, and you slide it to the right if you wanna zoom in. Uh, there's another zoom rocker on the top of the camera right here, T and W. Um, so you can, you can do the same functions. It's a little bit slower up top. Um, and yeah, so that's how you do your, your zooms. Uh, T stands for telephoto, W stands for wide. So uh, point it towards wide if you wanna get wider. If you wanna zoom in, point it towards T. Um, and this one's pressure sensitive, so the slower you do it, the slower the zoom will be, the faster, faster it'll be. Um, and then um, the all important record button is right here. There's a, a red, red button there, and then there's also a record button up top here. Um, when you press it, you'll see a red light appear on your um, viewfinder, and you'll also see some time code running next to it. That's really the only way you can know your camera's running. And there's a red light going on in the front that, uh, right here. So that'll be going, and you'll sh see your time code and your red light. Um, then you press it again to stop it, um, I've had a few people record when they thought they weren't and vice versa because they thought the green meant they were recording. Red means you're recording. So make sure that you're actually recording when it's time to record. Um, so this is the autofocus, manual focus button right here. And um, once you're in manual focus, you can uh, adjust with this ring here. Uh, right here, this is how you adjust your focus. So you slide this and you'll see your peaking move across your screen. And um, yeah, so there it is. Um, on the back, if you're set to manual exposure, this custom button uh, is gonna be your best friend. I recommend being on manual exposure because you never know when the lighting environment's gonna change. And if you're set on um, programmed AE or auto exposure, then you can't control your exposure until you stop recording again. So being on manual just gives you more options in case something changes in the middle of the shoot that you're not ready for. If someone turns off the lights or something, I don't know. Um, but this custom button, if you press it once, you'll see the F uh, stop will light up in orange. And then if you press it again, it goes to your shutter speed and then you press it again, it goes to your gain. Um, whatever was highlighted last, this dial right here will adjust it. So if you know you're in a dark environment and you're pretty much relying on your gain to adjust your light, then you want that to be the last thing that, that gets highlighted in orange. And once it's there, you can just adjust it on the fly while you're recording. So, you know, if the sun comes out and it gets brighter and you need to lower your light, you can just dial down and um, 
while you're recording and, and you don't have to stop recording or something like that to adjust. Uh, and you don't have to go into your menu touch screen, which can be a real pain while you're shooting. Um, if you wanted to review your footage or something like that, you'd go to here where this camera has these arrows going into this, um, this little play button. Um, we recommend that you don't go into that playback at all. Just kind of know if it's red that you're recording and then review your footage back at the studio. We say this because there's a chance there could be other people's programs still on the camera um, and we don't want anything to get accidentally deleted. It's really easy to delete things on this camera, so we just ask that you stay out of that. If you're taking the Canon X-A10 interview kit, we will have also have supplied you with at least one lavalier microphone, um, potentially two. Uh, so inside this, there are two little packs. They look identical. Uh, one of them is the receiver, and one of them is the microphone. Um, you can tell that because one of them has a microphone attached to it, and one of them has this blue XLR connector at the side of it. Um, they're both activated the same way. You pinch the sides. There's an on-off button here. You're going to press and hold the on-off button until it turns orange. Close it. And you're going to do the same thing on the other one. Open it up. Press and hold the on-off until it turns orange. And there you go. So the microphone we'll get to in a second. This goes on your subject. The receiver goes into the camera. So if you turn the camera here, you'll notice a channel one and a channel two. Uh, I always start with channel one. If you have two mics, then you use channel two. Um, it's just good to get in the habit of, of using channel one. So there's three prongs. A lot of people with XLRs make the mistake of trying to twist them for some reason. They're a straight connector, so don't twist. Just match up the holes and uh, just press in. Make sure when you eject this XLR connector that you press this release under it that says push, and then you pull out. Never force this out. Um, this pack is kind of free hanging right now, and there's a few things you can do with it, but if you're just using one microphone, I usually just slip it into this sleeve right here because typically your camera won't be moving very much, uh, and it'll stay. So we have that, we have the cord running right there. You wanna make sure your cord's not hanging in front of your camera at all. Um, but there we go. And we're gonna take our lavalier microphone and uh, hopefully it's packed away nicely. So we unravel it and we have it. Uh, this is the belt pack, uh, your subject. You, you can put it wherever, it'll clip onto pretty much anything if they have a belt. Uh, your pocket's fine, but just like that. But you typically want it out of the shot. But um, the belt pack's not as important as the cable itself. It's out of the shot. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so the cable itself, you don't want it dangling in front like this. Uh, a lot of people make that mistake, and it just looks really trashy. So what we're going to do is, no matter what they're wearing, if it's a suit jacket or whatever, try to go under their shirt. Um, just let them know ahead of time before you dive in. Um, now, I'm wearing a t-shirt, which is probably the worst kind of shirt, so it's probably a good example. Um, a good technique is to kind of give your microphone a little loop right there. It just makes it a little bit neater. And um, you need it to be pointing where they're speaking. So my, my voice is coming out right here. This is probably the peak of where I want to hit it. When you have the loop on the mic, it has its own natural direction that it wants to go. So if you need to put it on this side, um, it looks like we're okay, because I can pinch it like that. But if I needed to put it on this side, I'd run into a bit of a problem because now all of a sudden it's pointing off in this direction. So sometimes you need to switch around your mic. Now you have to be really careful with this process, but I'm showing you because you might need to do it. Um, this cap on the mic, comes off. Then you can take this clip and pinch it and take it off. Then you can flip it the other way, put it back on, and then take your cap and put it back on. So now 
I'd be ready to put it on to the other side. I'm going to put it this way. Now I can't see it. Typically you have somebody else do this. And you want to make sure it's not rubbing against any fabric. So I don't know. Chris, how does it, is it off? I have Chris come and help me. I'm going to show them how to swap it around too. Okay. All right. So now I have my lavalier microphone neatly placed and I have this little bit of extra cord coming out of the belt pack and you just try to uh, put it in your pocket. Just be gentle with it um, so that it doesn't tear. And uh, once you get it all set up, you're, you're good to go. So now I have my microphone on, I have my receiver into the camera, um, and now we're gonna go through the settings of how to make sure that you're getting the sound. Um, the other piece of gear that we would have given you with the Canon XA10 interview kit is a pair of headphones. So here we go. Uh, it's got the standard headphone jack right here. And on this camera, it's a little bit hidden where to put it. Uh, there's this kind of hidden door right here. It slides down and you'll see there's a little picture of uh, headphones there and that's where it goes. So when it comes to audio, um, you really have to trust your ears. So these cameras naturally have an auto level going on in them, but there's still a few options that you need to do uh, to make sure that you're getting your audio the way you want it. Um, so first off, you'd put these on. I'm going to have one ear open. And here on this menu here, you have channel one and channel two, and you have three options. You have line, mic, and mic plus 48 volts. When you're using a lavalier microphone, we want it set to mic. Um, so it looks like both of these are set to mic. And the most important thing that people get really confused about is this ATT function. That stands for attenuation, and you want attenuation on. Uh, what it does is it brings the level down to something manageable that the camera can handle. So just when you're using a lavalier microphone, make sure attenuation is on. And then the last, well, almost last thing is this interior versus external mic. When you have anything plugged in to these two jacks here, it's considered an external mic. If you don't have any microphones at all and you just want to pick up natural sound from the camera, that's when you would use the INT function. Um, but we're, we're have, we have a lavalier hooked to me, so we're going to do an external, put that there. And then just for safe measure, even though we're on auto level, we want to put these volume controls right in the middle. So when you're all said and done, even if you have two lavaliers hooked up, this is the setting that you want to have for it. All right. So we've gone through everything. We, now we should be able to hear whoever our subject is on their mic. Clearly you will not have the microphone on yourself. You'll have it on whatever subject is in front of you. But have them do a sound test. Ask if you can hear them. See, make sure all your settings are correct. And if that's the case, you should be ready to record. So you just frame them up. Make sure you get their focus right. and Make sure they're where they're going to stand. Your exposure and all that should have been taken care of and you press record, and you're good to go. This has been the tutorial for the Canon XA10 interview kit at NCTV, and I hope you've found this helpful.